from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the sea will be fair, uh, and I'll be full of hot air, but, or, or cool air if you need it, uh, blowing across the room gently. If, if, the, if all that was possible, I would just do that, but instead I'll just uh, go on and on and on with some nonsense because it's time for Sleep With Me, a podcast to put you to sleep. Hey, everybody, before the show gets started here, I just want to let you know that Sleep With Me exists because of empathy and compassion. The, the empathy and compassion we all share from being in the deep, dark night, tossing and turning, the understanding that it can be painful. And sometimes that involves like bigger things than just our own sleep problems. And so if you're in your need, if, you, if, you, if you're in extra need right now, sorry, I had trouble speaking, but because I, I guess because I get tight sometimes because this really is important to me. Empathy and compassion, dignity and respect, and taking that extra step if you need extra help right now, and being a part of positive change. So there's links to organizations, you know, if you need extra help right now, there's links to organizations you can connect with right now. And if you want to be a part of positive change, say Black Lives Matter with your actions. Say stop AAPI hate with your actions. Be a part of positive change. There's links to resources right in our show notes. And these sponsors right here are what enable me to be here for you twice a week for free. Thanks. Hey, everybody, Scoots here, and you've heard me talk about the Patreon a lot. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. $5 and up patrons get ad-free, full, brand new episodes twice a week. They also get two story-only episodes every single week if you just like the stories. There's no commercials. There's no jingles. And $10 and up patrons get all that. They have access all the way back to episode two. They get all intro episodes twice a month. They get a four to six hour uh, supersize uh, a compilation episode every single month and then $20 patrons get a Ray episode every month. But I just wanted to check in if you're a patron and you don't have your patron feed set up or if you're interested in checking it out. If you're a patron you can go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. P-A-T-R-O-N-F-E-E-D sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. When you get that patron feed set up in a quality podcast app you could search the feed. You could say oh I just want to listen to TNG episodes. You just search right in the feed for TNG. Uh, or if you want all intro episodes, or you could set a sleep timer, you could change the speed to ma- listen a little bit faster or a little bit slower. You could make a playlist to all intro episodes. So please, if you're a patron or you're thinking about becoming a patron, you say, wow, that solves a ton of issues for me. I just want to listen to story only episodes. Become a patron and set up that patron feed in your podcast app of choice and then get listening. You'll be sleeping even sounder tomorrow night. Sleep with me podcast.com slash patron or to set it up or check it out sleep with me podcast.com slash patron feed and if you are a patron you need any help at sleep with me podcast.com slash patron help p-a-t-r-o-n-h-e-l-p thanks everybody all right everybody it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor better help you know i've talked about my own journey with my own mental health my own use of a licensed professional therapist because i i guess i want to normalize it for you and say yeah it's not easy 2020 and 2021 have not been easy but i want to empower you to take steps to take care of yourself whether you're feeling depressed you're struggling with your relationships you're having difficulty sleeping meeting your goals. Tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp, offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. In that way, you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in 
all 50 states. And people close to me, people in my personal life have utilized the services of BetterHelp and they are really happy with it. And our podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. Visit better help.com slash sleep with me. That's better H E L P.com slash sleep with me and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced better help professional. Thanks everybody. Sleep with me is brought to you by progressive. Are you thinking more about how to tighten up your budget these days? Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average, and customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. It's the one part of the podcast I need you to hear. It's where I pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners the support of the sponsors. Let the sponsors know about it. Use our promo codes, or if you forgot to use the promo code, send them an email. Give them a call. Say, oh, you know what? I used a different promo code, but I heard about you and I supported you because you support Sleep With Me. Like Joel, who got a king-size Helix bed. Helix has been supporting the show month after month after month via helix in all form if you get a helix if you get an all form and you let helix in all form know about it you can fill out the form at sleep with me podcast.com slash sponsors and i can make you part of the dream door society it's really key though you let them know you use our codes that's how that's what how they that's what makes them decide hey this is a really valuable partnership we have with the podcast because it's not always easy uh balancing putting people to sleep and keeping the podcast free the sponsors and the listeners who support the sponsors are what enable that to to be possible. That's why I've been doing this Sleepy Supporter Zone because it works uh, and I really appreciate people like Joel who supported Helix. So thank you, Joel. If you support a sponsor, like I said, I, I already said, I'll let them know about it. Let me know about it. Go to sleepingbepodcast.com slash sponsors. Thank you. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. If you need extra help right now, there's links to resources in the show notes. And if you want to be a part of positive change, if you want to say Black Lives Matter with your actions, if you want to stay say stop AAPI hate with your actions. There's links to organizations where you can get started right now in the show notes. And one organization I support that listeners have let me know about it is 1000 Women Strong. They're on social media at 1K, number one letter K, Women Strong. And 1000 Women Strong is a national constituency platform. I have trouble saying it. Constituency platform centered around the civic and communal progression and advancement of black women. They have webinars. Right now, they're talking about student loan debt, and you can learn more on their social media or using the links that are right in our show notes. Uh, And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. A mystery bard. A lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Mystery Bard. I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. 
All you could do or need to do or if you would like to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake, whether that's thoughts you're thinking about, thoughts on your mind. It could be time, changes in time, temperature, routine. It could be something else, something baffling or situational. Or maybe work second, third shift. Whatever it is, I'm going to be here to take your mind off of stuff and keep you company so that you could fall asleep. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling soothing, creaky dulcet tones. If, you, if you've ever been soothed by the opening of a creaky door, uh, then you're in the right place. If you haven't, um, you might still be in the right place. Creaky dulcet tones just describes my voice, which is like, it's a very human voice. Some would say, like, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not perfect, it's not polished, but it's here for you. Uh, to take your mind off of stuff and put you to sleep. Creek also tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. Did I say that already? Repetitive uh, thoughts, repetitive words, confusion. Oh, my gosh. It's been a while since I said, if I had a band in the 80s, a hair band, I guess the name of the band wouldn't be Perfusion of Confusion, but that would have been our storied album. I don't know what we'd be called. I'm sure the listeners will give me a lot of feedback on this, but they say, oh boy, that was the album that really is, you know, all, other than the, the untitled one, which was the title of their album. They thought it was snarky, calling it the untitled one, but it was Profusion of Confusion that confused their, their, their fans because before that they were a... Uh, a uh, classical good guitar trio and not a, uh, like a glam rock, uh, like, uh, I don't know, because they, they, and they didn't know either, but it, you know, that, that was the time the zeitgeist was that we were all in a profusion of confusion. I mean, correct. I mean, we say, well, that's pretty much the state of being, being a human being. And so, that album went on to sell zero copies because it actually was never on sale because it was all in Scooter's imagination. And most people wouldn't even know, like, a difference. They wouldn't know Sam Goody if they met Sam Goody. They'd say, what are you, is that a brand of uh, candy they give out on Halloween? And I'd say, I don't know. I'm not even sure who Sam Goody is uh, to either. And then people might say, weren't you introducing a sleep podcast? Or did I just tune into a narrative music documentary that's, uh, str- say, oh boy, profusion of confusion. Uh, it was something we could never forget, but we'll forget it soon because it's, uh, we're actually, oh, so if you're new, welcome. Uh, that's a, that was a superfluous tangent and combined with uh, whatever that pointless meander and so if you're new, I want you to know a few things. I'm glad you're here. This podcast does take a few times to get used to, so give it a few tries if you can. So if you're skeptical or doubtful or unsure right now, that's a really normal way to come to the show. And for most listeners, that's what they say. At first, I didn't like you, and that's okay. It's uh, totally understandable. So let me give you some more information. To, uh, and I'm not even going to try to put you at ease. I'm just going to try to give you some more information so eventually, two or three listens from now, I'd be like, oh, now I get it. He was serious. Profusion of confusion it abounds. Uh, and he doesn't, he doesn't actually know what words mean. He just knows how to say them. So here's the most important thing is you getting the sleep you deserve and need. That's the most important part about this show. It's why I make the show... You deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a bedtime that you don't dread, that you feel neutral neutral about or look forward to. You deserve something to ease you into bedtime and keep you company while you drift off. That is very important to me because I believe—no, no, I don't believe, I know 
that if you get the rest you need and deserve, your life's going to be better, and my world, our world, is going to be a better place. And, you know, you know what's underrated? Well, I guess not. You know what's actually microscopic change is underrated. I guess it's not underrated. So if it was under a microscope, it would be under a microscope. Microscopic change. Not underrated because I can't be sure if I'm if this is a pun or it's just a fact. But it's important, whether it's rated or not. Uh, microscopic change, uh, one person's life being better and the world being better is true. So, no, it's really important to me. And I've also been there. I know how it feels in the deep, dark night, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. So it's important to me, too, because I, I know how, what, 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 yeah, dreading bedtime is not something that feels good. Or the frustration or the loneliness. I've experienced that and more. So that's why I make this show. A couple things that are hard to get used to is, one, this is a podcast you don't really listen to. You just kind of barely pay attention to it. So that takes some getting used to is, oh, I'm just kind of... It's not background noise, but it's not something I really listen to either. It's a podcast that never gets started, but is always going. And when he was saying profusion of confusion, he wasn't using it in a metaphorical way. He was saying, uh, he was using this in a descriptive way. So, uh, okay, that takes a while to get used to. This also, this podcast doesn't put you to sleep. The reason the episodes are up, up over an hour is I'm here to keep you company whether you're awake or asleep. If you can't sleep, I'll be here. But that's kind of what works about the show. I'll be here whether you're listening or not so that you don't have to. I'm here to the end so you don't have to listen to me. And you don't have to listen to me and I'll be here till the end. And you could queue up episode after episode after episode. Because my job is to take your mind off stuff, to be your boar friend, your boar bae, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar bestie, your boar bra. If you're, uh, you know, if you're in the sur- you're in, in one of the great surfing regions of the world, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to keep you company so you can drift off. I'm here to take your mind off of stuff so you don't have to pay attention to me. So those are two things that take it and used to. A, po- a sleep podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. You just wake up at some point tomorrow, and uh, also you don't listen listen to me. So that's one thing. The other thing that throws people off is the structure of the show. And the structure is very intentional, but it, it takes some getting used to. show starts off with a greeting, so you feel welcome and seen. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, then there's support, listener support, like support for you, support for our communities. Then there's support for the show via Patreon and our sponsors. Then there's uh, the intro, and the intro is separate from that. Sometimes people that uh, have strong feelings, they think the intro and the business are the same thing, but the intro is a show within a show. We're probably like already 10 minutes into it where I try to do, I try to efficiently describe the podcast and then I get distracted, <laughs> you know, or my own, my own profusion of confusion. It starts to spill. My cup is spilleth over with confusion. That was the first track on there. And that was con- confusing. And that was also one of the pictures on the back, uh, and no one understood it because it didn't make any sense. That's kind of this podcast. That's what the intro, the intro kind of has a mix of that, but also me telling you about the podcast and what it is. But for regular listeners, it has a familiar feel that's different every time. And that is really, like, in my opinion, the most important part about the show. It feels familiar so you can get comfortable, but it's different every time. So whatever it keeps you awake at night can't quite adjust it says oh well he's talking about profusion of confusion he hasn't done that in either one week or 600 episodes and i wonder what he's going to talk about and he'll probably get mixed up and forget uh you know what he was even talking about and so so you you can't whatever's keeping you awake i feel like constantly adjusts to keep us awake Uh, so i constantly adjust the intros the intro also serves as kind of like a a middle point between your daytime life and you falling asleep. It offers a little bit of a dusk, uh, audio dusk, 
uh, to ease you into bedtime or to help you unwind or to be a part of your wind down routine. So some listeners are getting ready for bed, some are in bed getting comfortable, and a lot of listeners are doing some other activity. Even if it's just lying around, that's an activity. Uh, Like a few percentage of regular listeners skip ahead to 20 or 25 minutes. But most people use the intro to to, to, to just unwind and uh, laugh along with me. So it's kind of like community time. It's like family time. It's like a family meeting that you don't have to pay attention to. They say, what was I talking about earlier, son? Don't know. Great, great work. I'm glad you're not barely paying attention. No, I was barely paying attention, I think. Did you say something about pr- pr- proposing uh, of c- c- collusion or something? No, no. I don't know what I was talking about earlier. So that's the intro. Then there's business between the intro and the episode because that's what keeps the show free and coming out twice a week. That's our goal, free twice a week. So we thank our listeners that support our sponsors for that. Then there's a story. Tonight it'll be our episodically modular series, Tales of Lady Witchbeard. She's a heroine, she's a witch, she's a pirate, and she goes on adventures, and we get to go along with her. And adventures tend to have a lot of speeches or, you know, just like uh, if you love exposition, if you love uh, whatever, like not world building, but talking about the world that's been built, uh, you're in for a treat to fall asleep to because that's what our episodically might. If you love uh, speeches, if you love to be told and not shown but not told in a, an efficient way you're in for you're in for a, you're in for a snoozer so that's our story and then there's thank yous at the end so it's the structure of the show that's why I make the show give it a few tries that's what hundreds of thousands of people said i didn't like this podcast at first and then i felt ambivalent towards it and then i had to stop listening to it mostly but i was still kind of listening to it it's a podcast I listen to play every night and barely pay attention to it. I'm a big fan. It only took me three times to realize that. Uh, so that's just give it a few tries. If you definitely don't like me or the podcast, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. There's other sleep podcasts and stuff there. But I'm so glad you're here. I really appreciate your time. I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. And here's a few of the ways I'm able to do it for you free twice a week. Thanks. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here, and it's time to talk about Feather. Feather is changing the furniture industry, and I'm getting ready to move, and I've been looking at furniture. And I don't know if you've looked at furniture lately, but you're talking about wait times to get stuff delivered four months, six months. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Now, with Feather, the furniture comes in as little as seven days. You know, moving and buying furniture, getting it delivered, setting it up, it's a huge pain. It's expensive. These are all all the reasons I love Feather. And this is why you have to check out Feather too. People who live in cities move six to eight times before they hit their early 30s. And Feather has it all figured out. They're a furniture rental company designed for people who want to feel at home no matter how often they move. Furnishing a one bedroom can cost upwards of $6,000. With Feather, you can furnish a bedroom with high quality, beautifully designed furniture for the cost of your monthly utility bill. Their delivery team brings the furniture directly to your home in as little as seven Seven days. They handle all the heavy lifting so you can go from an empty apartment to a fully furnished home without lifting a finger or assembling anything. And you got to check out their website. They don't just have furniture. They have these amazing rugs, lamps, wall arts. Now they even have outdoor furniture. And they might say, yeah, well, but what if I move to a place with a different layout? That's no problem with Feather. You can easily swap out furniture that works with any space. And it's more sustainable by renting with Feather. You're not buying fast. It's cheap furniture that's going to end up in a landfill. So you've heard me talking about it. Feather is going to be a part of my next move because they make it so easy. It makes so much sense. So try a new way to furnish your home. Right now, Feather has an exclusive offer just for Sleep With Me listeners. If you go to Live Feather 
weather.com and use the promo code SLEEP300. You'll receive $300 off your first month of their annual plan. That's livefeather.com and use our promo code SLEEP300 for $300 off. That's livefeather.com and use that promo code SLEEP300. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. And I don't know if I can do this Helix ad in the form of an ode. Oh, uh, Helix, thank you for having a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete. How I love how you match my body type and the listener's body types and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you or ye, depending on if this ode was being set, a, set at a Renaissance fair. And why would ye buy a mattress for someone else, right? This isn't very good for an ode. Oh, Helix. Uh, with Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be the perfect way for how you sleep. Ye, everybody's unique. Uh, <laughs> and Helix knows that. So they have several several different models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattresses that are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size folks. And oh, did I, oh, Helix, it was not that long ago I took your quiz. And you matched me with the Dusk Lux. And never has there been a better Dusk than when I return to your arms, my sweet, sweet Helix. For when I sleep hot, you keep me cool. When I toss and turn, I sleep on my side, I sleep on my stomach. You're there to adjust for me, to keep me comfortable. You're just the right firmness. I love seeing all the unboxing videos that listeners send out and what mattress they got matched with because I love seeing people find that the Helix that becomes the mattress of their dreams. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress you're matched with, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't ever have to go to the mattress store again. Helix is awesome, but you don't have to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. So just go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. They'll match you with a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you even get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X sleep.com slash sleep for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time for our episodically modular series, Tales of Lady Witchbeard. Uh, the tales of Lady Witchbeard. She's a she. Lady Witchbeard is a witch pirate. Uh, she was a witch. She 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 uh, grew up in a, wor a witch world. So not our world. Our world is a world that has some witches. Her world would be a world that has mostly witches and maybe I don't know if they have sleep podcasters there. She's thus far have not been able to get over to the witch world. You know, it, it, just like in the movies, you say, oh, okay, I get it. it like, uh, this is a world populated by witches. So you say, oh, okay, I, I can I can, I can, can get with that. Uh, well, but that, this story doesn't take place in that. She said to herself, uh, this witch world is great, but I don't know if this is the world which I wish to live in. It seems limiting. I like being a witch, but I don't know if I like living in a witch world. And at some point... She gained access to a pirate world, similar to a witch-based world, but it was a pirate-based world. Though the more I learn about it, that like the witch world probably is a factual thing. I would say, I would posit right here that uh, a pi this pirate-based realm that she lives in may be more a matter of perspective, because if you're in a sea-based, this is a world of the 12 to 13 seas, and if you're in a sea-based world and you're a pirate, you may go with the assumption that you're in a pirate-based pirate, pirate -based world, but you may just be too pirate-centric um, because you say, well, there's so much sea and so much piracy, where the witch world was mostly a world populated by witches, witch-based economy, you know, all that stuff. Uh, I don't know. That's just my two cents. Not super important, though, either. So she's in the pirate realm, Lady Witchbeard. 
She's a very successful pirate. Then she meets someone very similar to Scooter, who's talking now. And uh, her life of piracy, she met, she met him when she was on R&R from her pirate adventures. And she got sidetracked because he took her on a bit of an adventure. Then she had to take another adventure to get him because he got uh, separated into pieces and scattered across a universe. Which I think has happened in every... That happens a lot in Sleep With Me season, season twos, I think. But this happened in a time we weren't following her. Then she regathers Scooter. She needed another set of R&R &R or Daw is her sidekick. Uh, then she needed more R&R. &R. Then Daw got her into another adventure, but that happened to be in her pirate realm, the world of the 12 seas. Uh, but her piracy, her pirate guild clearance or something, or her license to piracy, or her membership as a full pirate in the guild had been, she had lost her uh, certification or something. So she was supposed to be returned as an apprentice pirate to this pirate called Don Dankel. And so she worked with Don Dankel, like, so Don Dankel and Daw. And Lady Witchbeard, they were trying to find someone named Brandy. And then they were working with Don Dankel. They found Brandy. Then Don Dankel said, now you're my apprentice. So then they went and they tried to go get, like Lady Witchbeard's still trying to figure out something to do with Brandy and the man who loved the sea. Then they tried to go catch some gold. They realized that people were not mining gold anymore. They were mining some sort of root, a bit like a cassava root. And that's not really good for pirates to get because it takes up so much. It doesn't have a lot of mass, so it doesn't really fit on a ship, uh, like a profitable amount of it. And then they tried to go check in on the guild to see what's going on. The guild was closed can't remember there's some other information but but uh daw had a magical map and at some point they said we got to go to library island to find out more oh boy library island take a look it's where you could find a book in the 12 seas it's a library island so that's exciting that's where they're headed next is library island I think uh, that's where our story may open or may that was a, the, where they were supposed to be going after the last episode. So I think that's it. This is uh, Tales of Lady Witch. This is our Hollywood announcer, uh, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, thank you, Scooter. Uh, uh, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to set sail. For another tale of Lady Witchbeard, whoosh! Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Antonio. This is that's Antonio Bar and Banderas. Sorry, and uh, this is Tales of Lady Witchbeard. Uh, Don Dankel, could you ask Daw where we are and uh, how we got here, please? Oh, thank Lady Witchbeard. I could I could answer your question, uh, Lady Witchbeard. Oh, can, can, I can't see you, but I could hear your voice. Can you? Can you let me know if you could hear hear my voice, Lady Witchbeard? Uh, la, la, I didn't hear your answer. Are you muffled? But we're surrounded by books, mostly hardcover books, Lady Witchbeard. Uh, Don Dankel, could you let Dawn know that I can hear his voice? And uh, could you could could you uh, talk to could to Don Dankel, please? Yes, Lady Witchbeard. Uh, uh, Daw, before you start talking, Lady Witchbeard's wondering a few questions, and I see I'm in now the intermediary, intermediary, I believe is what it's called, Daw. So I'm in a I'm in a tough position here. This is a new role for me, and I hadn't talked to you about it, and I don't really have time to get into it now. It's a role I've accepted and embraced, but um, this is part of the process, I believe. This is part of my process of learning. I'm talking and thinking at the same time, Daw. 
But I think as we figure stuff out also, so I don't think, I can't see you, but I, I think we all know that we're in a, why don't you tell us where we are and how we got here, please, Daw. Uh, we're in a, a book, a tube full of books, uh, or a, I mean, uh, I don't know if either one of you have silos. I've actually never been inside a silo. And I don't even know it was in silos. Was it grain sil grain elevator? I don't know. But usually, when you drive around and you see farms in my world, huh, interesting. I'd love to. Uh, I'd like to say see silo, but you would see silos, especially when you're on a Sunday drive. And I was always under the assumption that the silos were used to full of something. This is like a silo, which would be a cylinder. Yep, I thought of that one all on my own, Lady Witchbeard and Don Dankel. But we were somewhere in a large cylinder. Uh, malt, part of where, oh, where are we? We're on Library Island. We're in the great l hollowed halls of the great library on Library Island. Within Library Island, I'm not exactly sure where we are like floor-wise or even layout-wise. I think we're near the middle. But currently, I'm kind of on my side. I'm almost in the fetal position, which is great. Uh, below me, uh, I can hear Lady Witchbeard and Don Dankel's voices, and but mostly books. I can't really see anything. Other than books, there is some light. I mean, the nice thing about books is that light is coming through. And then above me are books. And there is one, a couple of books that are poking me because of the, the, you know, the edges of the books. But otherwise, I think the interesting thing that I'm surprised about, maybe there's not that many books, but I can't, yeah. So we're in a, a cylinder of books, Don Dankel? Okay, Dodd, thank you. I'm not exactly... Oh, Don Dankel, I do have a question. Why is the lady which we're only talking to you? I mean, I can almost... I think I don't want to make an uh, assume out of me and you and her. But, uh, like, um, why is she talking? Why does she... Why are you an inter intermediary? And could you ask Lady Witchbeard that? Uh, thanks, Daw. I'd probably prefer if Lady Witchbeard... I think Lady Witchbeard's still on a line of inquiry. So I, I, I'm not going to assume the next question. Uh, I think we'll probably learn through the Lady Witchbeard's line of inquiry how... So, Lady Witchbeard, um, do you have any more questions for me to ask? Don Dankel, I do. Could you ask Daw how we got here? If we are in a cylinder of books, surrounded by books, how did we get here? Thank you, Lady Witchbeard. Uh, Daw? Um, I mean, how did we, like, uh, yeah, part of me wants to answer that in a broader question, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to have any snark, uh, Technically, I kind of uh, uh, shoved you and Don Dankel to, to hurry you, and then I dove behind you and curled up as I dove. I think the librarian, like, wasn't that like the librarian? Maybe you didn't see that. Uh, uh, through a shoot, which was a book shoot, it seemed that I'd always wanted to do this. Not in a book shoot, but in a movie, like there'll usually be a laundry shoot. Um, so we dove to get away. Uh, so, so, but are you, Don Dankel, do you mean something more specific than that? Yeah, Daw. Can you start with, uh, don't start at the beginning, like in a snarky way. But, uh. Lady Witchbeard, do you have another? Do you have a further line of inquiry for Daw? Yeah. What uh, 
what actions did Daw take that had us end up uh, in here? And how did we get here? So, Daw, why don't you start with, uh, we got to Library Island. Lady Witchbeard and I are seeming to, to think that some things happened before we got to Library Island that you didn't tell us about. And then something, so could you take it from there, Daw? Sure, I'm just wondering, though, uh, before I answer your questions, Don Dankel from Lady Witchbeard, Lady Witchbeard, uh, shouldn't we be trying to figure, should, shouldn't we, shouldn't we, oh, okay, I guess you're right, this is, a, I remember when you said this is part of Lady Witchbeard's process, so I should just answer my questions. You're right, Don Dankel. It's almost like I can feel both of you looking at me, even though I can't see the one of you. Okay, and I don't know if, how much you know all this, Don Dankel, but it seems like information should be freely flowing. So there was a ma there was a ma magical map, right? Uh, that was a map that led us here. It was t stuck to my hand by mag some sort of magical force. You know all that, right, Don Dankel? Yes, yes, Doc. Keep going. So the magical map is what led us to Library Island in search of answers. I think we all can agree upon that. Go, keep going. At some point before. You saw the magic, maybe, I don't remember when this happened. At some point, you and Lady Witchbeard were doing something, and uh, some pirates came, and I did show them the magical map. Uh, so I think that's answering one of your questions. Uh, but I can even, Lady Witchbeard, is that you moving around, or is that your, are you tapping at a book or something? Uh, Don, Don Dankel, can you ask Germ if he showed the map to anyone else? Y y y yeah, yeah, Don Dankel, so I did, you don't have to, uh, we'll, we'll just, I can, I can, um, help you with your, so I showed it to the pirates, then I showed it to Don Dankel, then Lady Witchbeard and I examined the map as well. We set sail for Library Island in search of uh, search of uh, whatever what things we were looking for. But Don Danko, I can almost feel you too. But anyway, apparently those pirates also set sail separately from us for for Library Island. And I guess because they left before us, and also because I got my leg caught in that bush, and then I again I got the map stuck, and that took a while to get me unstuck. Um, that uh, that that they probably had a bit of a head start, so they arrived at Library Island before us. Lady Witchbeard seems to wonder if I'm going to tell the truth, which I will. Uh, that yes, I did also show the map to Brandy. Uh who I get, apparently was on a, some sort of uh, wanted notice or something or some sort of pirate uh, guild update or something, which I guess I'm not privileged to know anything about, and uh, some sort of secret pirate stuff that I guess, you know, that uh, but I knew that, uh, yeah, I knew a little bit about it. So, yes, Lady Witchbeard, I probably shouldn't have shown it to her because I should have, but it was just, a, I had a weak moment. Uh, she said, hey, Daw, what stuck to your hand? Was she like, uh, and I said, a magical map. And then she said, oh, magical map to wear. And I said, well, uh, like why would why did I, and I said why does it have to be why does it have to be mapped to somewhere it's a map of places uh, and she said huh oh well well and and she then you know and then eventually yes yeah, I showed her the map yes I did and apparently now at the time we didn't know this but uh, apparently Lady Witchbeard saw I mean I'm sorry. 
Lady Witchbeard, Don Dankle, did you hear that? I got Lady Witchbeard and Brandy mixed up. I can hear you moving around, Lady Witchbeard. Is that your uh, leg kicking or something at a book? But yeah, apparently Brandy saw something on the map that Brandy was looking for. And she wanted... So, does that answer all... I think that's... Does that clear everything up so we can get moving here? Uh, Don Danko, can you let uh, uh, Dawn know that uh, we're stuck in a tube of books, one. And two, I just still don't have a full grasp of everything we're dealing with. Uh, so, no, we're not... We haven't concluded our line of inquiry. By the way, Don Danko, very good job, uh... Uh, you're helping maintain the modicum of patience I have left. And actually, Don Dankel, I think you could take it. I don't even think I need to guide you through this. Uh, okay, thanks, Lady Witchbeard. Yeah, Don Dankel, uh, uh, Germ, just so you know. Oh, sorry, Daw. Uh, it slipped out. Uh, okay, d d Daw, so you showed the map uh, to Brandy. You showed it to some pirates. We got to the island. Now, we arrived at the island. I didn't see another ship, but apparently there was one. And then when we we, we were going to, um, we had some things. We, we were going to try to collect anything, and then some of the goats got loose. Now, you, you and Brandy said you were going to chase the goats, uh, that I believe both of you let loose as soon as the gangplank went down. And you both exited the ship chasing after goats. And I, I guess my question would be, uh, it's not important at this point, but was that a, did you plan that together or was it an accident? And then what happened after that? Because this kind of is the most important part, Daw. Because I know what happened to Lady Witchbeard and I in the crew after that. Uh, but we didn't see you again until just recently. So you were chasing... So you were uh, with the goats near the gangplank. Yeah, that was part of the thing with Brandy and the map. She said... Uh, she said, I wonder if a goat would try to eat the map off your hand. And I said, well, we kind of need it. That was kind of, and then she said, oh, the goats probably want to be walked at some point. I mean, I like the goats. You know, I was a goat once. I don't know if you knew that, Don Dankel. I was never a goat lord, but uh, I was. I spent a lot of time as a goat. And, and, and uh, not, not that that's super important, other than I would like goats either way. But Brandy said, why don't you take the goats for a walk? And she said, here, hold all these uh, go goat leashes. And I didn't realize that the leash, the, the goat, there was no such thing. So she kind of like fooled me. And then the gangplank went down and all the goats ran off. Uh, Brandy went off... Uh, I think she said she was chasing the golden goat or something. I don't remember. So I spent a few minutes in, I'll be honest, on Dankel. I, I was uh, pa 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 panicking because I was afraid I would get a stern talking to from either you or Lady Witchbeard. I didn't really think anything of Brandy running off until now. And... I didn't anticipate that the pirates would have been there. So, yeah, those are my bad, one bad, number one, number two. But so I chased the goats for a little while, but then I realized, oh, they just wanted to get some grass. Also, oh, just so you know, goat won't eat a magical map off my hand. But when I chased the goats, you know, there's all this grass, there was all that grass leading up to the entrance to the library, and I don't want to get too off topic, but I worked in, I've, I, you know, I volunteered at the Anthony Quinn Public Library, helping out in their summer program, among other things. That was to, as I, I, because I was so inspired by the Monday Branch Summer Librarians and, uh, and from reading Rainbow and LeVar Burton. 
that that was kind of me partially repaying a debt uh, of gratitude. So I'm familiar with libraries. So I was interested to see the library. And I can hear Lady Witchbeard intaking a breath. Uh, and I can almost feel a fervent brow or something, or a furrowing of a fervent, fervent brow. But yeah, then I said, huh. Wonder if they had. Uh, 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 I'm not going to make 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 a. I said I wonder if they have any spell books in this library. Now it turns out they don't categorize things in the library the same way we do, or I did. Not that I was good at that anyway, but uh, you know I'm good at finding books. Uh, and so I started looking for a spell book, figuring that Lady Witchbeard would raise her voice at some point and I could hear it and I would come. Uh, but it turns out that the, it's a great library, so that's kind of uh, not just a title. It's pretty, it's pretty large. And so I did not hear any of the commotion you're referring to. So could I ask you... Uh, like to, to just summarize what happened, uh, because you know, then I came upon you later. Uh, this is the, the so this is Don Dankel, uh, Daw. So you came upon us later, and we were under the, the guard of pirates and brandy, and they were trying to figure out where you were. And if you were really playing a fool or not a fool. And if they should just let you wander around pointlessly. That's what Brandy said, like a goat. Uh, but she said that she may need that magical map. Uh, so they were. she was debating with the, 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 our crew, who had now been conscripted by this other crew that Brandy was now kind of had taken over. Now, as far as I know, Brandy's, I, I think we can safely say that, unfortunately, uh, that uh, the guild system is no longer in use because those pirates joined up with Brandy based on some promises we did not hear. So I'm just making an assumption there. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we were caught by them very quickly and surrounded. And our crew, somewhat understandably, uh, saw that the tables were turned and some of them stayed with us and took a visit to the great, you know, the great uh, 15th Sea, as we say. But a lot of them joined up with this other group and now were led by Brandy. And they were also searching for stuff, but they wanted to t take care of Lady Witchbeard and I and you and get the magic map. Uh, I guess that was part of it. it was that they, they couldn't quite find what they were looking for. Oh, that's great information, Don Dankel. Yes. Um, so was there a question in there? Uh, no question. Uh, just uh, what? Uh, so what happened after the? So where were you and what happened while that was happening to us? Okay, I assume you just want the summary and not all the details of me trying to find books and then figuring out at least where. Like I, I mean, it was really interesting. I'm pretty proud of it, but I did find a spell book. And. Uh, but I don't know if Lady Witchbeard would, I guess apparently Lady Witchbeard wouldn't be proud of me because it was actually like, because they said, oh, well, if I was a spell book, uh, a really good one, it probably wouldn't even be in the main stacks. It'd be in somewhere locked up. Like if it was a spell book that actually worked. Uh, so uh that's where i got the spell book anyway so i guess it's a side trip that's not important and at some point i was also able to, I'm, I'm pretty good at sneaking and there's so many stacks and books and stuff uh that i was able to kind of catch up and uh 
I realized that, uh, and I actually thought of this one on my own too, that Brandy would probably be looking for the map because she didn't look at it long enough uh, to, because to, it, it, it always kept uh, re-scrolling even though it's on my palm. Like it was really hard for me to hold open for her to read it. Uh, and she was kind of getting irritated and then the goats kept kissing me. Uh, or nuzzling me, and then I would giggle, and then the map would close. So I, I knew she would need to see the map again, and I knew that I had this spell book and that the map was magic. And based on all of the uh, movies I've consumed, I said, okay, there's a possibility here. I could, you know, I might not even need my own magic. Also, I don't think, it, I don't know if you knew, like, it, it was, it, this is a very specific, it, it's a library, it's a spell book for librarians. Uh, and so, um, like, so yeah, basically, I tried, I tried, I tried to make a fake map. Uh, that's one. And then I was, so I wanted to rescue you and Lady Witchbeard. I mean, I guess that's, so I wanted to use a spell. From the spell book, I, f I found a pretty good one. It had pictures. Holy cow. The picture's pretty accurate, too. And it was like at the back. It was like in times of uh, great ignorance, you could summon the book beast, they called it. Uh, and I said, oh, wow, I could just summon the book beast. Uh, I, he I just heard somebody else groan. Did anybody else hear that? Anyway, so I said, okay. If I can summon the book beast, then, like, uh, the book beast, like, that would, I could, could rescue you and Lady Witchbeard. And I figured I'd do that while I was trying to show a fake map uh, to Brandy. And that the book beast would come and then, like, uh, go after, you know, because it said in the book, basically, the book beast, like, uh, it's a it's a beast made of books, and it, it, it like will will take take people and then to put them through rote learning for a long, 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 long time. Once it catches them, now what it didn't quite explain in the spell. Oh, I guess it probably did. I just didn't read the whole thing. Was that uh, well, one I would be distracted, so. The the fake map didn't work. Okay, so answer to that question. The fake map did not work. While I was reading from the spell book, casting the spell, or I think, or summoning the book beast, uh, Brandy was able to hold, hold, I mean, I was holding up my hand kind of because I thought, I don't know, I got mixed up, okay? So I summoned the book beast while Brandy was reading the map off my hand, uh, so Brandy actually was able to use the map. Uh, now, a little wrinkle that probably is going to cause some other shifting in Lady Witchbeard's position. It did take the magic. Brandy, I think, in the Pirates read the map. Then it used the map, like, before the magic got used up from the map. Because uh, it did say you need one magical item. That was the magical item I had. So then the book beast got summoned, but I guess because it took me so long because I had to re like it took me it took me a couple times to get through the the, the incantation or whatever. Uh, and then it took a little while for the book beast to get put together. You saw all this though. You were all that. Yeah, I mean, I guess you saw that part. Uh, you probably didn't see the part like that first part. But then the book beast was formulated. They had already run off. Uh, and then while the book beast was kind of getting its, like, sea legs or whatever, I untied both of you and the librarian. And then we started to run. The book beast was chasing us. Uh, I saw, I had seen already the book shoots, uh, like when I was wandering around and I'd opened it and I said, I looked, I put my head in there and I said, this was when I was on a lower floor though. Or maybe it was an upper floor. Huh? That's a good question. But I put my head in there. I said, hello, hello, hello. 
below. And I even did throw some books in there. It ends up that the, 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 so is that all, does that answer everything? Uh, I think so. Uh, other than the fact you realize the book, we can, I can still hear the book be pacing around. And uh, Lady, Lady Witchbeard, any f further line of inquiry? Yes, uh, Don Danko, and uh, if you can inquire to, Jer Jer to, to Daw as well. So, I, I know where we are. What is the, the did, did Daw see anything else about the, how many floors have this book drop thing? What purpose does it serve? And where in the building are we? Because I memorized, I know where we had, no, well, no, now we need to figure out where Brandy went. So, um, we have to get out, so we have to figure out what this book tube is and where in the building we are, and then we have to get out. Uh, do, so, Daw, do you, did you see, uh, do you know what this book tube is? Did you read the signs, I hope? Uh, that's a great question, Lady Witchbeard and Don Danko. Um, I think it said, hmm. I mean, it was this big thing, like bigger than I would have imagined, obviously, because we could all jump in. And I started thinking about all the movies, and even a couple people I knew had these in their houses, I think, or maybe it was just in movies, for laundry. They used to call them laundry chutes. I mean, this one's a little bit different. So I don't know. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. This is a librarian speaking. I'm, I, I've been uh, just been waking back up. You did hear me groan when I heard that you summoned the book beast. And I didn't even know that book was hidden. Uh, it's been a legend for uh, thousands and thousands of years, both the bo book of librarian spells and... Uh, the book beast, I didn't think either one of those was real because that door says do not open ever. But uh, to answer your questions, uh, we are in the book disposal tube. These are for books that are no longer readable, that have been replicated. Uh, and uh, so they're for books uh, that, yeah, they're not non-readable books. I don't want to use any... Uh, you know, work jargon, books you cannot read or use, except maybe, you know, to hold up a table or something. But even then, that's we're not supposed to do that. So this is a book disposal tube, I guess, uh, to use uh, very, uh... okay, this is a Lady Witchbeard library, and I can hear you, you're close. Uh, so did you get in here when, uh, were you, that you were running with uh, Daw? Uh, yes, yes, it was captured with you, remember? Sorry, I am just a little frustrated, uh, the librarian. Plus, so could you tell us a little bit about this uh, book disposal? How many levels is it? Where does it go? And what else we need to know? Well, uh, it, it goes to... Uh, uh, the boilers, uh, so, so this is how the entire, uh, the heating system uh, for the great library and, uh, you know, it's, it's, we have a, a steam powered, uh, we have different steam powered devices, uh, and radiators and hot water even, uh, if you're taking a, I don't know, cause you're, you're, you're out there on the sea, but, uh. I'd like to offer everybody a hot shower, holy cow, or a hot bath, uh, really something to partake in. I'm sorry, did you say these? You, you, oh, yeah, you might not have noticed because we're in the center of the books. Uh, my toes are pressed against the wall, and we're slowly moving down. Uh, we're probably, I don't know exactly, have an exact feel for where we are in the building, but uh, I have felt like it's getting warmer. So, yeah, the books, it's just its own self-feeding system. It really works great as long as we're, we're constantly uh, 
Uh, well, it's tough to describe how it works because I'm the only one here. It's a bit of m magic, not like in that book. But anyway, when I say we, I mean the royal we. But yeah, we're slowly, yeah, I think you get the idea that uh, this isn't a great situation to be in. And I don't even have an apprentice right now. So not a great situation to be in for me either. Okay, so then we have to get out. Um, okay, could you tell me more, uh, librarian, or could you ask Daw? So we have books on top of us. Did the book beast push those books in, or were they released? Uh, or is that important? And then, uh, w like, uh, how many of those book d d drops that Daw jumped us through are there? Which side, of, like, which direction are they? Okay, yeah, the, so there's always books being, dis, uh, like, uh, copied and disposed of. I'm doing all that. Uh, unfortunately, it's like one of those things where I can go I can go super fast at times, uh, even though I can't go super fast right now, only when I'm doing d d stuff on the to-do list for the library. Getting out of the book tube is not on my to-do list. I didn't expect this to happen. I don't know. It's a very, very. It's all very technical. I only have powers. I only have technical powers, so I can't use my powers to get out of there. But it was probably me in the past pushing the books. Uh, I don't know. Tough to explain. You know the way time and space works. But but so uh, not important though. Other than that's kind of what's keeping us in place. Yes, there are every other floor. So if you go by floor, uh, every fourth floor, there'll be a north, south, east, west. It kind of spirals around. Each floor has a book drop. It just might be on the north side, like uh, the north side of the tube, the east side of the tube, or the west side of the tube, or the south side of the tube. And I feel like we're probably like... Uh, six or seven floors before we get down to the, uh, sub, you know, the, 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 where we don't want to be. Okay. All right. Don Dankel. Daw. Librarian. Let's see. I mean, I guess, yes. You know, one thing I noticed, Daw, was when I was, li no, Don Dankel, when I was listening to Daw's story was that, uh, yeah, my leg was shifting involuntarily with uh, irritation. And I said to myself in the back of my mind, I'm wiggling here. And we used to play this game when I was home when I was a child. We called it the witch's wiggle. And I think we can wiggle through these books towards the wall. And if we each of us can reach a wall, then one of us will reach a wall and you know, so everyone start wiggling. Huh, I don't know which is outward. Everyone start wiggling. And you just got to pretend you're like a little inchworm inching along. And if you get inch along, you could either inch along upwards or downwards to use the, the, the books as a way to move. Uh, and I'm already at a wall here. Lady Witchbeard, this is Don Danko. I'm also at a wall with my feet. I was unable to do turn around, uh, but I was able to w wiggle downwards so with my feet, and I'm able to move them a little, slowly spreading them a little bit. Uh, I haven't found a door, though. Yeah, I'm just looking. Uh, and librarian, you already had one foot. Could you get your... Uh, yes, Lady Witchbeard, my feet are against the wall, and I'm searching, too. I think we're moving slow enough if all of us slowly work clockwise and counterclockwise, uh, we'll find something. Uh, Daw, do you have anything? N n oh, never mind, Daw. I found us. I found one. Okay. Um, so if everybody can, I think I was the first one in. So if everybody, I'm going to hold on and... Hmm. 
We're slowly going. Oh, Lady Witchbeard, I feel. Is that you with your feet? Yeah, that's that's me, Don Dankle. You're going to have to. Huh, I don't know how we're going to do this here. I guess I'll wiggle. Okay, I'm gonna I'm wiggling out, uh, so you might not hear my voice for a second. Don Dankel, you keep wiggling, uh, if you can, any further. Okay, I'm doing that, uh, Lady Witch. Okay, oh, Lady Witchbeard's got me by my feet, and oh, okay, okay, well, I'm wiggling. So if the two of you can hear me, oh, is that your hands, uh, librarian? Yeah, those are my hands. That's you, that's you, Don Dankle. Yeah, keep wiggling because you're a bit above me, and you'll reach the ledge there in a second. And then, Lady Witchbeard, I'm almost out now. Uh, okay, I've got it here. Daw, daw. Right, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm right behind you. I'm really good at wiggling, librarian. I'm just a little down. You don't have any books on uh, cheering up a witch, do you? Uh, we don't, Daw, but I think if we could, like, uh, we've got other things to worry about, like the, the book beast. So, oh, yeah, uh, see you, Daw. Uh, Lady Witchbeard, are you going to pull me out? Uh, no, Daw, this is Don Dankle. I'm pulling you out. Uh, okay, you're out. We're all out. Uh, let's use a quiet voice. Lady Witchbeard, what do you think we should do next? Well, we have to get the book beast and. So, librarian, tell me a little bit about your job, and then the idea of this book, the legend of the book beast. But pretty concise because it's going to find us. So we have to figure out a plan. Because if it catches us, it would just force us to learn forever, is my understanding. More or less, Lady Witchbeard. It was to punish. It was a. It was a myth of last resort. I thought it was always a legend. I didn't even think. Uh, how we got these librarian powers, they're bestowed upon us. Uh, so I don't have, I didn't come up with the powers or learn how to do them. The powers are just a technical part of my job. And the book was always, oh, there's that uh, librarians and witches and magic users were once, uh, you know, in, in, in other times or other worlds. Sometimes I thought it was fiction, but anyway... Uh, the, 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 you know, if the time was to come that the librarians would be protected by book beasts, uh, and then maybe those forced to ro r learn in a rote manner, you know, would either be suffering from their own ignorance or they would, uh, evolve and become librarians themselves, uh, keepers of knowledge. But I, you know, even in the legends and the stories, the book beasts were, uh, not tameable, and that's why they were never used. Uh, they were last resorts. Okay. And anything else I want? Like, so you're the only one that works here? That seems strange to me. There's an entire library island. I understand you can move at some sort of super speed or everything else moves so slowly that you seem like you're moving fast. Um... Is there is there a reason for that? Oh yes. So the, the, another thing was that uh, you know we have a guild, just like there's a pirates guild, and you know it's a professional classification system. All that you know, you're familiar with it as pirates. And yeah, the the head librarian is the only one. I'm the only one that knows where all the books are too. So when people would come to Library Island, which has been rare because we're more of a repository versus an academic library, but the academic library would place orders with us. You know, that's too complicated to explain, but, like, I know where every book is, too. It is so not an incredibly efficient system. It is, if, like, uh, I, I, you know, now I'm thinking about it. Uh, so, you know, it's probably someone above me pulling the strings, I guess, and saying, well, if the librarians just do their jobs, just do your job. Uh, we'll give you, you get the powers when you get the job. You know, we get to go to Retirement Island. So, you know, when we retire, so it's like, uh, seems like a pretty sweet deal. Not worth questioning. I know where the books are. Someone says, hey, I need a book on, uh, I don't know, uh, well, Brandy, well, Brand, they were looking for bi something with binders, uh, 
and this other ingredient I just never heard of. Okay, hold on, because I feel like the book book beast is going to find us pretty quick here. So that's great information. Thank you, librarian. Don Dankle, do you and Daw have any ideas? Uh, could you ask Daw? Like, like uh, I, I have an idea, Lady Witchbeard. Daw here. What if we, um, I mean, the book beast is made of paper. Oh, no, no, the librarian. No, 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 Daw. Well, I was just thinking it wouldn't, even if we said, hey, we got a sparkly sparkler. No, 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 this is Library Island, Daw. Please, uh, you've done enough for all of us. Lady Witchbeard, Don Dankle here. I I feel like you you like you were saying, what is the what does the book beast want? Uh, it wants it's a last resort to force us to uh, rote learning. And then you ask the question about uh, the librarian. And why is the system so inefficient? I don't know, Lady Witchwood. I feel like you were, were, were I, there's something there. I just can't see it. Okay, so what is it? Thank you, Don Dankle, for helping me think things out instead of us. Uh, though, you know, there's no bad ideas. Uh, but uh, so the book beast wants its last resort, bit of chaos, but it wants people to, to wrote, learn, to protect the library and to punish those that would be, come without knowledge. We all have some degree of knowledge, differing degrees, clearly. And I just wonder if, and I, I mean, I may have to use my own magic here, like we just give the book beast what it wants. No, please, Lady Witchbeard, I want to stay with you and Don Dankle. No, no, Daw. I mean, Don Dankle, tell Daw that's not what I was saying. Lady Witchbeard, this is a librarian. I'm wondering what you're saying, though. Okay, well, you should, the idea that just one librarian knows where all the books are, we've already seen, we've just been a part of a process that if we didn't wiggle our way out, it shows the gap in the system and again, we're not going to judge who came up with the system or what at this point, but that the book beast should be help. If we give the book beast what it wants, it would just help in the library. Okay, go ahead, Lady Witchbeard. Yeah, that uh, I'm going to make. A, I'm I'm going to um, you all stay here. I'm going to make. I'm going to sing. I have this this, this thing I can do where I do this whistling singing and I think I can just make it, I can just, the book beast should help you cat. Cause here's the thing in, uh, in my world that I came from, we had libraries and we also had seed libraries and ingredient libraries and all those r r r couldn't know. We, I think we probably had spells that someone could retain that much knowledge, but they shouldn't have had to. So we had classification systems, um, and, you know, oh, you could put find the book in AACQP, FMG, LZ, uh, Nettles. Okay. So I think you and the book beast librarian could, couldn't the book beast come up with something like that or help you? I don't know. What is your plan? Well, I'm going to sing a song and kind of charm the book beast with the truth. And it'll, like, it should relax the book beast enough. Uh, so stay here. If I don't come back, you, you'll probably hear, you, you'll probably smell some smoking. Unfortunately, Daw's right as a last resort. But uh, I'll be back. Okay, bye, Lady Witchbeard. Sorry about it. Uh, oh, Don Danko, uh, what do you think? Well, Daw, uh, I think uh, we're lucky to be working with Lady Witchbeard, and and uh, you know, I I I have uh, you know changed positions with Lady Witchbeard voluntarily, uh, or I guess we'll you know we don't have a crew anymore to command. But oh, here comes Lady Witchbeard. 
Okay, the book beast is charm. The book beast is already researching. The, re the book beast is going to do some rote learning about classifications. Uh, but book beast's name is Bernard, by the way. So librarian, you can work with the book beast. It'll be fine. Daw, where's the spell book? That's one. And then two, librarian, where is it? We need to get to the information that they were looking for. You said it was a binder or binding agent. And what was the other thing? Yeah, the other thing was a strange ingredient I'd never heard of, uh, except in one place, which was like this story of witches. It was a f fictional story. Um, and uh, it was a story we read as kids because it was something that was supposed to be funny that I'm kind of feel embarrassed to say. Uh, okay, well, go ahead, librarian. Oh, it was called Nudie Do. I'm sorry, what? Nudie Do. Nudie Do? New, like new, new poo, uh, basically, I, I think. Uh, but that was the only place I ever heard of it. And, and Brandy was uh, in, in the crew. They, they asked me about it, and I said, I like, yeah, there's it's in this one story. I got the storybook for them. So they took that. Uh, but I said, well, that's not. And then they needed maps. Uh, to find this certain binding. Well, first they wanted to know, like, uh, it was a lot of research, actually. I mean, I guess you, that, that was a time when Dahl was lost. Oh, here, Lady Witchbeard, here's the spell book. The book beast got it for me. Uh, thank you, Dahl. Anyway, but librarian, so, well, I could show you the maps. Uh, they were find, trying to find places in the 13 seas that had a concentration of this binding agent. Okay, and you'll have an explanation of what the binding agent is? Yes, yes, yes. And thank you. This is going to be great. I'm going to have a helper. Have, do you think the book beast would want to be friends with me? Because that's the only thing about this job. It's incredibly lonely. Listen, librarian, you'll have to work all that out. We've got a lot on our plate here. We've got to catch up with Brandy. we got to figure out where she was going. And we got to figure out why she wants this binding agent and what of this witch's tale or whatever. Maybe that's just something that she wanted to read. Lady Witchbeard, do you, are you, have you ever worked with Nudie Do? No, I've never worked with n Newt Excrement Germ. Thank you. It's Daw. Actually, it's Daw. You call me Daw after the, the bird. Okay, well, so let's find out. Uh, where Brandy went, and we'll head out after her. Uh, how does that sound, everybody? Lady Witchbeard, could we take a nap, though? Sure, Don Danko. We could. I'm sure there, there's guest quarters here, right, uh, librarian? Oh yeah, there totally is. Uh, yeah, let's all take a rest together, and get some sleep, and then we'll do. You can get caught up with Brandy, and I'll show you. Uh, the areas they had researched and what was most likely that they did. Yeah, I'm going to, Lady Witcher, could I hold that spell book while we get some rest? Duh, you should just get some rest and get some sleep, and then maybe we could all do a little bit of a better job of working together tomorrow. Good night. All right, and I want to thank some people who reviewed the show on Apple Podcasts recently. Just a tired sophomore. Said it's not your average podcast. I was going in expecting another monotone podcast that would make it hard for my ADHD to slow down, but I was present, pleasantly surprised. The intro made me incredibly happy as I'm non-binary. Don't get re much representation in the media. This is a small thing made my night. I'm a student in high school, stressed uh, about all the stuff uh, I'm behind on. And the worries cloud my brain, make my insomnia worse. This is like my insomnia as a kid. Uh, podcast takes my mind off everything I'm worrying about. I've seen a couple of people uh, complain about the tangents and incoherence because of their ADHD. But for me, in my HD, ADHD, it makes it easier to relax. Sleep podcasts that have a monotonous voice are hard for me to listen to. And I can normally follow the tangents because I go on them a lot too. 
This is more of a ramble than I wanted it, but I really love this podcast. I feel comfortable with the voice and how he speaks, and I can follow what he's saying and doze off. Thanks, Scooter. Uh, thank you, uh, sophomore. This is good, good stuff, says uh, maybe not for you, but helpful nonetheless. I've been going to sleep with this guy's voice for the better part of a year. might not be for you, but if you have problems, give it a couple nights and just see how it turns out. Curix says, a great podcast, works every time for me. Sunshine and fun from Canada says, thank you for being my gateway to sleep. Someone called me a loud mouth, a uh, loud and annoying voice. Uh, and, sta- and then someone else says, Stammer- stammering and inco- that wasn't even on purpose, that stammering. And incoherentness is uh, intolerable. Uh, Allie Sonny says, uh, it works for me 100% of the time. Wow. And Jace, I don't know if we read this one already. Let me just see. I think this is the first time I've reviewed a podcast because it's not Spotify, but this podcast is exactly what I needed. Never knew it till last night. Uh, I think it was one of the hosts of Night Class. He mentioned it, uh. I followed for a bit, but I kept forgetting to listen. During the day, I usually listen to more conversational types of podcasts, but because the monotone scripted podcasts bore me so much that I get tired while working, so I would usually save those for the kind of podcasts when I go to bed. Most people it needs background noise to sleep, but of course, when you're actually trying to sleep, uh, the podcast is interesting enough to keep you awake, but this completely nonsensical rambling is not, uh, about nothing is exactly what I needed. There's nothing loud to wake you up or bursts of uh, laughter or anything. I mean, I guess I've totally only listened to one episode, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be my go-to sleep podcast. Uh, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for reviewing the show. Sleep Maybe exists a free podcast because people that review it uh, or uh, support it on Patreon or support our sponsors. We grow as a show by people spreading the word about podcasting in general. You know, most places it's less than one out of two people listen to podcasts on, on a regular basis. Uh, like, oh, no, no, no. Listen to podcasts at all, like 50% or more of wherever you're listening. Probably never to listen to a podcast even once. Uh, so let them know about podcasts. So it's sleeping me a benefit. And then I'll tell, tell you about our referral program uh, coming up here, Future Past Scoots. Thanks.